Hi Canisius, it's Wednesday, October 21st, and I'm Alexis Book. In today's news, we will be discussing the new public health initiative with Vice President of Student Organizations, Darby Ratliff. We will also give you an inside look on Little Theater's production of Love, Love Labor's Lost. And as always, we will keep you updated on what happened in sports this past week and let you in on some upcoming events happening on campus. Stay tuned, this is Canisius Connection. Welcome back to Canisius Connection. Today we're joined by Vice President of Student Organizations, Darby Ratliff, to discuss a new public health initiative. Hi Darby. Hey Lexi, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. It's good. So how did the new public health initiative get started? Uh, well, recently Senate instituted a new public health committee uh, chaired by a junior, um, Dilpreet Carr, and so she has been working with Tim Utz and the rest of the committee to really get more initiatives on campus to make students more aware uh, about health health things on campus, whether it's like improving the health center, or other health initiatives that we already have going, um, as well as instituting new ones. Okay, and then uh, what does this initiative consist of exactly? Sure, uh, so the first big thing that Public Health Committee's been working on is having CPR training open to all undergrads. Um, so we'll be hosting two training sessions in the coming weeks for undergrads to like sign up for and like learn and be certified as like uh, CPR trained individuals who and the certifications already been paid for by the undergraduate student association okay and then who does this initiative aim to reach exactly uh, well we're really trying to reach as many people as possible and as many people as are that are in, as interested uh, so specifically like all undergraduates some club leaders I'm really trying to encourage to do it as well as like anyone who's who's able and willing to do so Okay, and then are there any specifics you could elaborate on? Sure. So the first public health tra or the first CPR training is going to be on Halloween, actually, uh, and we'll have like snacks and refreshments. It's about a three-hour training, uh, or two to three hours, as the case may be, and students will get C completely CPR certified with it, like the certificate of certification. So in case of an emergency, they'll be able to do CPR. And then the second one will be very similar, and I think it's on November fifteenth, if I remember correctly. Okay, cool. And then what effects is this going to have on the clubs? Uh, well, we. Last night at the Senate meeting, uh, we passed um, an amount of money for, for clubs so that if a club executive board officer goes to the CPR training, they will, like, their club will receive a $25 grant. So it's not a lot of money, but it's enough for like, refreshments um, or just like an added like, t-shirt or pens, really whatever they want to use that money for, as long as they send one executive board officer to the CPR training. Um, they can't double dip, unfortunately, so an executive board officer can't represent more than one club. But at least, like, we really wanted to push, like, to have as many people go to the training as possible. So. Okay. Well, thanks for being with us today, Darby. Of course. And you guys stay tuned. We'll be right back with more Canisius Connection.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back everyone to Kanisha's Connection. My name is Brandon Rudd. And I'm Kia Gale. And we are your hosts for your favorite segment of the show, Kessler's Corner, your center of weekly recaps about sports teams and C-Block as a whole. Now, last time when we did this segment, the Grizz were coming off losses the weekend before. Kia, has there been any changes to the losing trend this weekend? Well, actually, yes, there was. Men's soccer came out victorious last Saturday against Quinnipiac with a student score of 1-0. Goalkeeper Andrew Coughlin had an easy day out there as he only had to face one shot through the whole game, his, while his teammate Lucian Priest scored an early goal to give the Griffs the edge. They hope to continue that winning edge at home against fierce rival Niagara today at 7 p.m., and that will be on ESPN3 in a broadcasted game. Sounds like a that should be a very heated game. And speaking of heated games, men's hockey was going against a very tough ranked opponent by the name of number 10th ranked Bowling Green. The Friday matchup was a competitive one, but again, the Grizz fell short in the contest two to four. Now, this is hardly what the Grizz want to start off for their season, but they send zero and three in their record. Now, they are heading into a two game home series against Holy Cross, hoping to change that zero into at least a one win. The two games will take place on Friday and Saturday at 4 or 5 p.m. We all know that our Griffs are fighters, and we know that they can get that win under their belt. Now on to the Lady Griffs. The women's soccer team have been fighting into, to get into the groove this season, and after coming off a win in their last game, they were feeling confident going into their match against Quinnipiac. However, the Griffs couldn't make it back-to-back -back wins, for they lost in a 0-3 shout-out. Or shut down, should I say. <laughs> Just like the men's soccer team, they are leading into a rival game against Niagara on their turf today. And for both games, we'll give you the results in next week's episode of Kessler's Corner. Indeed we will. And moving on to the Volley Grizz, they were on a road trip this past weekend where they had to face St. Peter's on Saturday and Ryder on Sunday. In the first game on Saturday, the Volley Grizz took care of business as they swept St. Peter's 3-0. Kaitlyn Tyre led the team in kills with 16. And in Sunday's contest, the Volley Grizz were unable to put two a winning streak together as Ryder was too much for them, winning three sets to one. The team will finally be back this weekend at home to face Iona on Saturday in Manhattan on Sunday. They will conclude their homestand on Wednesday as Niagara comes into town. Well, it seems like Wednesday might as well be called Battle of the Bridge Day here. <laughs> in other Griff Sports news, rowing finally got to see action after a long day in the head of Charles' competition this past Sunday and placed 12th after showing a bit of rust in their game. For our last sport, the swimming and diving team got into their season as they faced Marist last Friday. Saturday, they both lost. Men with a score of 169-122 to 122 and 153.5, 144.5 women's. Thanks, Kia. Well, that's all we have for, t for you today in Kessler's Corner. We are going to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we will come back with some lifestyle news. And finally, be sure to check us out on our next broadcast on all things Grizz Sports as we will do what we do best, and that's recap the action for you. This has been Brandon Rudd. And your fabulous Kia Gale. For Kessler's Corner, we'll have a good one, Griffs. What up, guys? This is the White Panda. Just wanted to thank all of you for the love over the years and continuing to support us as we grow and evolve as artists. We're setting the bar even higher this year as we continue to take our shows to bigger stages and wilder crowds all over the world. Cannot wait to party with you guys soon.
Welcome back to Kanisha's Connections. And today I have Maria Ta with us to talk about the premiere this weekend by our own little theater. Can you tell us about what the play is and what it's about? Sure. It's William Shakespeare's Love's Labor's Lost, so it's one of his comedy plays. It's a classic comedy play. We have four couples uh, throughout the entire play. There's four guys that make this promise with one another to just study and not deal with girls and to stay away from anything that has to do with girls. And then they meet me and my troop, uh, and then they end up falling in love with us. So they like write long, really long <laughs> love, letter, love letters and give us really nice gifts. And then we think it's all of a joke, so we try to mess with them and switch each other around and get them to fall in love with other people. But it's a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. Um, a lot of good poetry, so, yeah. That sounds awesome. How long have you been rehearsing for and, like, working on the sets? So it's been about six weeks now. Um, we started rehearsing right towards the end of September. Uh, so towards the beginning of September, excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, and then right away we started doing sets. We just actually start, finished our set as of yesterday. So uh, it's the, the entirety of six weeks. We try to pack it all in there. Is it like one set or do you make like, is it like multiple things that you guys switch out? Sure. Um, it's one big set piece. And okay. then we have smaller pieces that we change. Uh, we have like a forest scene. So we'll have like trees and bushes and stuff that we change in and out. But it's it's one big set that we have. We did a lot of stone work on this one, so you get to check out some of that. And all of you guys like just do like your own time and just like go in and just paint things that you can. Yeah. So our uh, our group's pretty talented. So everybody has their own. <laughs> Not to uh, toot your own horn or anything. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like there's a lot of like we we don't have a theater major per se. Yeah. So nobody's really um, dedicating their entirety of their lives in the theater, but. People like to paint, people like to draw, people like to design things, yeah. people like to make uh, the lights or the sound. So we all kind of bring in what we can and make it what we can. It sounds really interesting. Why do you guys think that you chose this play to show for Canisius? Sure. So our main stage is always a Shakespeare play. Um, mm -hmm. So we like to try to bring something more classical in so that everybody can start learning the language and the style of William Shakespeare. Um, we chose Love's Labor's Lost because it has a lot of women. Uh, little theater is plagued with lots and lots of women and not enough men. Mm -hmm. So we try to pick a play that uh, deal with more of the women than a lot of the guys. So we, there's a little bit more of a, an emphasis towards the women in this play. Yeah, it sounds amazing. So like, when will students be able to check out the play and how could they get more information about it to go see it? Sure. Um, so the play opens up this week. It actually opens up on Thursday. We're running Thursday through Saturday. Um, all of the shows at 8 p.m. They're all free. Uh, we have our posters are up in the hallways. Um, they're everywhere. Yeah, they're everywhere. We have a big poster and then we have emails that we send out. But uh, we're like the loudest club room down the hallway. So if you ever have questions about the show, you can always come swing by and ask us then. Well, that sounds amazing. Well, thank you for joining us, Mariah. And good luck this weekend. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more Canisius Connections. Everyone gets a miracle. My miracle was... I wound up living across the street from Margot Roth Spiegelman. She was arguably the most gorgeous creature that God had ever created. Are you going to spend the rest of high school pining for this girl? As senior year drew to a close, Margot and I were practically strangers. Until this one night. Margot? I need to borrow your car. Can you just get your boyfriend to do it? Ex-boyfriend. My boyfriend has been cheating on me. Revenge plot begins. Take the picture, now. You feel my heart beating in my chest. That is the way you should feel your whole life. It's beautiful. It's a paper town. Paper houses and paper people. Everything's uglier up close. Aren't you? I think it's gonna be different in the morning? I really hope so. Margo always loved mysteries. Maybe she loved them so much, she became one. She's gone. When was the last time you saw Margo? You were with her her last night. It has to mean something. There's something in Margo's window. She left little clues, like breadcrumbs. I think she's sending you a message. Come find me. We're trying so hard. You'll go to the paper towns, and you'll never come back. I think I know where she might be. I'm going with you. She's going. I'm definitely going. Take a risk. Stop playing it so safe. What can I say? I'm on a mission. Hey! <laughs> You love her, right? Yeah, I do. Everyone gets a miracle. My miracle is Margot Ross Spiegelman. Welcome back to Kanisha's Connection. Let's take a look at what's going on on campus this week. 
This Friday is White Panda, an EDM experience from 8 to 10 in Montante. Tickets are $5 and being sold all week in student life at the door. If you have any questions, email spb at canisius.edu. Be sure to check out Little Theater's Love Labor's Lost. Tickets are free and available outside the Mayday Murray Theater during showtimes. Ever wonder if the school is haunted? Come find out! Paranormal researcher Chris Fleming is coming to Canisius this Saturday from 8 to 10. The first 30 students to arrive in Palisano will be taken on a special tour of the fourth floor of Lions in search of ghosts. Need some extra money? This weekend, from 10.30 to 1 in the Student Center, you can exchange your leftover cans for cash, save the environment, and your wallet. Come get fit with SPB. There's a new session of workouts, so come check out Zumba, Power Flow Yoga, and Flip Fit Club with Cody every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 7 in Palisano. Well, that's all we have for you today. Make sure to check out Griff TV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay fully connected. We are a new show every chan on Channel 4.1 every Thursday at 6. From all of us here at Canisius Connection, have a good weekend, Canisius.